Greetings and salutations, we're back down the shed again, and I want to at least try and finish off one mechleth. That's probably because I want to demonstrate to you a little technique called weathering. It's got that crackling come through, and I don't know if you can pick it up, but there's all these white streaks in there. I kind of like that, but I don't know how I'm going to preserve all that. That's, it might have shifted in the heat the last few days. We've been a lot of humidity and heat, so that's probably why it's you know, not helping. However, we'll be covering that up very quickly. We'll be covering that really soon with a bit of this and a bit of this. I'm going to be using one of the Adam Savage techniques for weathering, and I love it. It's one of my favorite weathering techniques, and it's, um, it's from one of Adam Savage's uh, One Day Build videos. I highly recommend seeking it out. Uh, if I remember, I'll try and drop a uh, link in the bottom, but come on, you should, be, you should be subscribed to test it at least. The basic principles is that use the dark black to add a little bit of a dirt and you want it to be, you don't want it to be pure black so you mix it in with a little bit of ochre and you can use some, just have them together on the same plate and just use a brush to like splosh it all together You can and you wet it down, it's a long process. Uh, you don't have to be too exact, you don't have to use the exact methods. You can paint it on if you want to splotch it on, I, I prefer to splotch it on. And what you want to do is you want to get into some of these cracks, especially where there's um, something that's had a lot of use. You want to darken these edges up. And it just helps break up those basic shapes. I also noticed on this, there's a lot of fingerprints that are turning up now, and I don't know why. I've tried not to touch this, but well, it's obviously it's the oils are still reacting to it. it. Doesn't matter. This is supposed to be a weathered prop. Obviously, this will probably have to take to the paint differently to a uh, glossy one, and you especially do want to use it with glossy props. I find, um, especially will break up some of that reflection, and because nothing is perfectly shiny, especially a weapon. Even just adding a bit of black actually just makes it pop. Some of this I want it to be dirty. And in fact, I'm going to grab something. This bucket of rust. Well, it's iron oxide, which is pretty much rust. Now, if I open this up and try not to inhale, you can see that it is literally full of rust. Now, I'm not going to be trying to... I'm not trying to paint this on. Maybe when some of these areas are still a bit wet, I want to dabble some of this on, just to give it an idea that this has been through the wars. Now, they're probably going to keep the blade as smooth as possible, because that's the place where you're going to have it be sharpened. But all these areas here, maybe in the back of here, anywhere that you think this is not being touched too much, that's where the majority of your dirt is going to go. And you can keep the the handle relatively clean, especially as you're going to use it, and acrylic paint will rub off. So you really don't want to do too much like that. But you know, these areas here where it's, well, that's the other thing. We're going to be using a cloth. We'll put the paint on with a bit of with a brush. Even just like this, it's a really crappy brush, but that's fine because we don't need it to be perfect. We just dabble the paint on, and then we can smudge it or dopple it off. It doesn't have to be too pretty. So let's begin.
Um, weathering is not a one and done deal. As you can see, I still kind of want to work on it. It's a matter of sometimes you just, you know, like you, you pile on a lot of material, you take stuff off, you pile on a lot of material, you take... You just keep going back and forth. Like, I, I added all this rust to it. I mean, I, I took some of this because it was just easier to work on it. I'm trying to remember, like, take, take out some of this rust that's on there. I mean, rust will get on leather, but you want to kind of... You know, you're, not, you're not trying to say, oh, look, it's, this is a rusty leather. So I'm just trying to get rid of some of that. Uh, one thing I did notice is... I could have probably put a few more coats of paint on this because as I was going over some of these edges, it was starting to rub off the paint itself and it's revealing some of that. But I've got to cheat for that. You don't want to be necessarily cleaning with a clean rag. I mean, it's actually better if you've got a bit of a dirty rag because you, you, you don't want to take off all the paint. And I like even having those little splotches there. It really, it really sells like how old this thing has must have been. You know, it's something that's probably been passed down the generations. And if I really wanted to get like really deep, deep lore, maybe I can find something like a badge or something I can pin onto the uh, the handle and try and make a bit more like a ceremonial thing or something like that. And yeah, even just, I even went through and like scruffed up the leather, like the idea that, you know, the leather itself has been used and abused for so long that, you know, it's... It no longer has that gleam, that glisten. Just going over it just gives it that look that it's been used. Nothing, nothing that has been used, used constantly, constantly, and constantly should look shiny. Oh I mean, yeah, dropping things can easily add weathering, and because it's cracked, uh, I'm just gonna grab that towel. And that's the other reason why you know you kind of want to use some pre dirtied stuff is because then you can just go over it when. Having a bit of that to that, dab it on. There we go. I don't know if you can see that, but in the cracks there, you can see where that dust. Sorry, not dust. You can see where that rust has kind of accumulated. That's real. That's real iron. So it's not done it necessarily so much in there, but it's selling that idea that you know this thing is old. They've tried to clean it up. In fact, this is a lot better. This is easy because I'm using acrylic. If, um, if I was trying to use a nail, then you know you'd have to be you have a bit more working time, but you have a different result. I've seen some people use uh, enamels for this type of stuff. I prefer acrylic, again, so I could just go over it with a cloth. And if I, if I find the things a little bit too dirty, I just just and yeah, and just hit it with some water. Now I've got, I'm still having these issues with the uh, with these white striations. I was hoping the paint might kick into it. I might try a bit of graphite, but I might actually try and use a bit of. Um, enamel and go back over them. It's time to keep it. So, now that's done, I figured, well, it's going to be a weapon that's still in use. I'll see if I've got some... Okay, I do have some chrome silver to my and I might use that instead of this. Just a very quick while I'm thinking about it and I've got to shake this up. Paint is essentially two things. It's a pigment and the medium. So the pigment is the color. The medium is how the color is delivered. Acrylics tend to be water-based. Uh, pigments and water. Enamels uh, tend to be oil. So pigments and oil. That's also one of the reasons why oil has different curing times. It can tend to go a bit slower, but it tends to be a bit sturdier. Uh, you can also use things like um, waxes and stuff like that. There's, that's how you essentially get a crayon, is a pigment and wax. And then, of course, you get things like this, which is a pigment, which is for resin. Too much. I'm going to be using what's called a dry brushing technique. And all I'm really looking to do is I'm just dry brushing this edge. My rationale is the silver is where it's been sharpened. And even an antique sword by a Klingon, they would still keep it sharp and ready for battle. Weathering is telling a story. Weathering is saying... This is something that's happened to this object. Did this object get dropped on the ground, which made a scratch? And did this person bother to fix that scratch? And of course, I can always go back over this with some more paint afterwards. You don't want too much material on the brush because you're not trying to cover up everything else. Dry brushing is a great technique if you can uh, 
get a feel for it. Is your rubber? Yeah, you rub the paint. You rub the paint. The, pa the paint on a bit of paper. There we go. That's better. And one thing I've always loved about the Mechleth is it's just a very simple blade. It's got a few complex curves. I mean, working with oils always have. So I'm trying to think while I'm doing this. Any places that I've got some where you think there might be add some rubbing, just add a little dry brush there. It's just there, like doesn't have to be too much. This is the power of dry brushing, you essentially just hiding a little bit. Anyway you think that a scrape, maybe along here as well. I'm only just to see I'm only just using the edge of the brush. Gives it that one line. There's barely any paint on there. I still do it up if I want to, but I'm pretty good with that. Weathering isn't just darkening stuff down, it can also be lighting stuff up. If it's a bladed weapon, add some silver to the edge make, to make it look like it's been sharpened. And it could also just be a recent thing, you know. Maybe this was an old ancient blade that's been sharpened up to go back to war. Because, you know, the the Klingon house, maybe the Klingon house is being invaded. Maybe this is an old warrior who's looking for one last uh, battle to get into Stovacor. He's Maybe the grandpa is sending his grandson off to war and so sharpened up the mechleth that kept him safe throughout all of his years. There's always a story you can put into a, a prop. You can see props as just this thing that you hold. That's, that's fine, it's just a prop. With weathering, what you're doing is you're telling a story. You're adding a character to this piece. When you look at this now, you don't necessarily go, this is a brand new thing. You think, this is an old workhorse that probably should be put out to pasture. I mean, it's, it's dimpled, it's cracked, it's been sharpened and probably dulled and sharpened and dulled and sharpened you know the what the leather I mean, even if i wanted to like get some get a knife and start scoring it even more you know maybe this would be some maybe there's been some uh i don't know maybe there's been some lines or i'm not i'm not digging into it i'm just literally touching it and just it's about subtlety in fact I'm gonna add one little bit of element to that I was thinking about it before and I thought eh, no, but I think I'm gonna do it I can always take this off, but maybe this particular Klingon was raiding a Federation outpost and his Mechleth got uh, damaged in a, maybe a phaser blast just smashed it to pieces while well, he's crackled it, smashed the handle off after he killed the uh, Starfleet uh, security officer that, uh, that broke it, he just grabbed the pieces and taped them back together because I got all this dirt and gunk on there. I just need to hydrate it and just add a bit of water. Start rubbing down that. I can also add all that dirt back in. There you go. My broken battered mechleth with space tape. If you enjoy this contact, please like, subscribe. I guess they want you to do that thing with the bell. And if you want to be notified about any of my videos, I have been putting these videos up about at least once every two days as I've uh, been working down the shed. I can't guarantee that the input's going to keep going, but uh, we'll see. I'm also doing uh, some vlogging now. I would like to get uh, back into doing Does Whatever a Spider Can. So if you're really interested in these kind of things, let me know. Uh, if, I'm, if you want to see more Spider-Man stuff, tell me. I'll do more Spider-Man stuff. If you want to see more vlogs, you want to see more builds. If you've got an idea for what you want to see me tackle, even if it's just a thing of... I'm really, I really don't know, understand this concept. How do I do this? Let me know. 
Otherwise, uh, I'll see you around next time.